Terrapicos is one of the newest legendaries introduced within Generation 9, more specifically within Part 2 of the Hidden Treasure of Area 0, the Indigo Disc DLC. Right from its release within the OU tier, this Pokemon was a nightmare offensively because of its terrifying stellar capabilities, efficient bulk, and substantial power that makes it hard to take down. Now, I'm not here to talk about how this mod works, and if you want more in-depth analysis, be sure to watch this video I made a while back. In any case, long story short, this Pokemon was outright banned from the OU tier within days due to its impeccable power, and now in the Ubers tier within its first month, it's top 10 in usage. However, when I read the forums on Uber Scarlet and Violet, not many players are actually too fond of it from what I've read. Players would rather rank this thing a C to C plus tier, but how is that possible? This is the cover legendary for DLC 2. This was advertised as the most overpowered, terrestrialization phenom that Pokemon has ever seen. Terra Starstorm is no joke, and this quite literally has no switch-ins. Its power is not to be underestimated, and its utility in Rapid Spin is crucial for a tier that relaxed reliable hazard removal. So what went wrong for this Pokemon? Why even though it is top 10 in usage, it is struggling to make a significant name for itself? Let's deep dive into the problems of Terrapicos in the Scarlet and Violet Uberus metagame, a metagame meant for powerful legendaries. Before we get into it, if you guys haven't already and are new, be sure to subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content just like this, as many of you guys watching are not subbed, so I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, and let's get started. The main gimmick of Terrapagos is that it needs to terrestrialize for it to realize its full potential power. I've said it since the dawn of Scarlet and Violet. Being reliant on Terra won't make a Pokemon viable because it proves to be predictable in team confining. Wochian is the perfect example, with its poor typing being the reason why it can't be a defensive, defining OU staple. Well, Terrapagos was the first Pokemon to break this rule in OU, primarily because it was ridiculously overpowered with its terrestrialization, becoming a base 700 stat total Pokemon alongside a broken signature move that has no real counters once it's Terra. In the Uber tier though, it isn't the only standing powerful Pokemon within the tier. We have other notable Pokemon such as Arceus, Koridon, Kyogre, etc. All who are powerful Uber's legendary Pokemon that have been dominating the format since its official revival. These Pokemon like Terrapicos can also utilize terrestrialization to its own advantage to put themselves in a position to ultimately win the game. The thing that makes Terrapicos go is its terrestrialization, that puts it as a base 700 stat total comparable with other legendaries within tier, and without it, it's a base 600. It is more reliant to the Uber's tier for it because otherwise it pales significantly to the downright legends of the tier. Furthermore, when it does activate its stellar terror type, while the offensive boost is an exceptional raise, it doesn't do defensively to solve its mono normal type. Now, I know what you guys are thinking, normal types, well Arceus is top 5 within usage. Well, Arceus has been a dominant staple, but the difference is with Arceus, its base 720 stat total is solid with 120 in each stat. It is solid all around and doesn't rely on Terra to be dominant, rather it is almost a cherry on top, which is what makes it formidable. With Terrapagos continuing the cherry analogy, the terrestrialization almost seems like a building block or the actual cupcake rather than the cherry on top. It needs to Terra to be competitive and thus it is locked into its Terra normal. It can't change its defensive typing either when we compare it to Arceus who has that infinite luxury. Speaking of Arceus, there are many variants of Arceus and other legendaries like Kyogre who can do the combine setup sweep in a much better fashion. Not only is terrestrialization one of the bigger issues, but for example Arceus can recover in between turns to further enhance its viability on the field. Kyogre is incredibly bulky and can sit behind sub, Calm Mind, and probably Terra to further increase its longevity while dishing out huge water type stab coverage. Both Pokemon in this example are mildly faster than the Turtle, which is also another point of emphasis. Terrapicos' speed is kind of a problem when you're looking into this metagame. As an offensive Pokemon, it is outsped by a lot of popular Pokemon, which then can harass it and chip it down much easier compared to other Pokemon. Terrapicos has to rely on having moves like Rock Polish to enhance its speed even during its terrestrialized form to make it up there with the other Pokemon. Normal Terra Arceus, for example, is naturally fast, and thus can use that moveset for better equipped moves it would rather instead. And okay, if the Arceus example is proving to be repetitive, we can also bring in the Crossbow Duskmane, one of the pillars of Uber since its arrival in Generation 7, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. While it does have an incredibly low speed, its typing, ability to terrestrialize, insane bulk, and a good setup move in D-Dance makes it the ultimately better option. It's got more versatility within its set and could run the Rock Polish and Source Dance variant if it really wanted to. 
NDM can quite literally do what Terrapicos has wanted to do offensively, but with better bulk and a more proven versatile Terra type. Not to mention, but defensively, being mono normal does not help it when you factor in the most popular Pokemon within the tier is Coridon, a fighting and dragon type Pokemon that could relatively outspeed it with ease and slam it with its fighting type coverage. Now, I know one thing Terrapicos can do, and that is get rid of weather in its terraform, except this isn't that hard to bypass in Ubers. In OU, this was an overlooked ability primarily because at the time of its release, sun and rain didn't pick up in much as popularity as of it is right now, and second, it's overpowered to begin with within the OU tier with lesser power level to deal with. Thus, it wasn't looked at with glaring eyes. In the Ubers tier though, because of its deficiencies, this is more scrutinized since Terraform Zero is viable once per match. For example, this means Pokemon like Coridon, Miraidon, Kyogre, etc. can U-turn or switch out one-time activation and then never have to worry about it once again. AKA, this ability is much more of a glaring issue in Ubers because 9 times out of 10, it seems a bit worthless due to that one time in battle clause. So okay, to cut it short, we get it. As a bulky sweeper, Terrapicos might lack the necessary tools for it to be successful, but it still has other use in another fashion, Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin is a move that not only provides a speed boost, but also gets rid of hazards. In Ubers where hazards are much more viable, again, a topic for another day, having more hazard removal other than a Garatina Origin is much needed within the tier. Origin is locked into an item as well, unlike Terrapicos, which can hold items like Leftor if it, if it so chooses to. The flip side is though, Origin can spin block with its ghost typing, and furthermore, again not to beat on a dead horse, but Terrapicos cannot Terra into other defensive typing unlike Origin. Terrapicos from the outside looking in, while it is a top 10 in usage, probably by people who want to make it work and I don't blame them, it is in a limbo state within the Uber Spin game. By no means is this Pokemon awful, despite me pointing out the flaws, like it is still a great Pokemon, but in Ubers, it has Pokemon that does its job better, and provide other unique perks that it can't do. Terrapicos is powerful in the right situations, but players prefer to use more other stabilized Pokemon that are more reliable and dependent on a gimmick to make them feasible. Terrapicos, anyways from what I've also seen, is still a pretty good revenge killer. Terrapicos is able to switch in pretty easily and then go to work from there, and it can catch their opponents off guard once it terrasalizes and starts going to work. So there are still upsides to it, I didn't really cover the upsides in this video because I want to really highlight the deficiencies of Terrapicos in this video just to make it clear. I don't think Terrapicos is horrible. And and I don't think Terrapicos will at any time be like a bottom 10 Ubers Pokemon. It's way too good to be down there, but I just want to refer back to some of the deficiencies that Terrapicos has that is more highlighted and more prevalent and more glaring within the Ubers metagame than it would have been the OU metagame because it was just too overpowered and the power level was just different. Anyways, this was just something to think about and I thought it was something worthwhile to mention. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think and thank you to my members for their continued support. If you wish to support me even further, the links to my Patreon and YouTube membership are down below. We have 5 new exclusive YouTube membership emojis that you guys can use on any of my Chompy related YouTube content, so if you're interested, become a member today. Comment down below the turtle emoji if you have watched this far, join the Chompy Discord, and with that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching as always.